press it. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Let's uh, come into a comfortable place and uh, allow your bodies to settle into the earth. Start to feel into your breath, to the earth, into the experience of your own body weight against the ground. And um, begin to find that place where you're alert to the experience rather than kind of zoned out, like this kind of sharp awareness, alertness, but without being overly focused and overly alert, maintain that alertness in combination with a sense of calm and relaxation in the body. And the best way to do this is to really use this in-breath and out-breath to your advantage, letting the breath be fluid and natural. And track your breath, the entire in-breath, from beginning to end. Track the pause that comes in between the in-breath and the out-breath. And then track the actual out-breath as it fully nourishes and releases tension from the body. And notice that you're here now. Whatever it is that you are thinking about or doing before class, that's gone now, and it's a new moment. And see if you can carry this new moment with each in-breath and out-breath. making it your new moment, your new experience of this freshness of life. And to a point where you begin to just revere this in-breath and this out-breath as a sacred kind of manifestation of creation. have a friend who always reminds me that no matter what the situation is in my life, um, she reminds me that I'm still breathing and to come back to that is such a resetting in perspective. One more deep in breath and an out breath. And just slowly start to find some small movements throughout the body. Let the 
kind of this organic feel will start to emerge as a as movement it's the best way to describe it so you're in this beautiful stillness and there's all this energy within the body and and think of it as it's kind of flowering outwards into movement however that shows up in your own experience Still experiencing the in-breath and the out-breath and still really experiencing this freshness in each movement. And if you are lying down, slowly start to make your way up into a seated position, meditative seated position. You can roll over and press yourself gently upwards. Bringing the palms either stacked on top of the heart and the belly or joined together in a prayer pose. Letting your kind of body become aligned, kind of gather, gather your energy inwards and feel that coherence from belly to heart to mind, like this, these three centers of body, where the belly really is, this like body center belly center, heart center, the center of emotion, and also the intellectual center. And literally feel this like line of energy just coming down from crown to root within you, aligned with the spine. A vertical line. As we collect ourselves energetically, we open with the sound of Om, the primordial sound of the universe, and think as though the sound is arising from the deepest silence, the deepest kind of absolute stillness, and how it's kind of arising from that originary presence into a sound with its special vibrations. Take a cleansing breath. Inhale. slowly open your eyes and start to make your way into a table pose. You might circulate your wrists around a little bit before planting them on the ground or stretch your wrists once they arrive into, onto the mat. And when you arrive into table pose, start to actively warm up the spine into arches and curls. It's so easy in yoga to put ourselves on automatic. Since a lot of the poses are done repetitively, 
And I invite you today to not work from memory, from that intellectual center, but see if you can work a little bit more from your body center and your heart center, the, 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 the emotional center and the body center. Just will eventually include the intellect in, you know, when we become a bit more active in the practice and doing a bit more complex sequences. But for now, see if you can just tap into the experience of the body, leaving the intellect aside. And at some point, you can separate your knees a little and walk your hands a bit more forward and start to just move a little more deeply into some stretches back and forth. Feel into your shoulders as you press back and feel into the spine as you open up. Notice if the lower back is compressing in any way and take care of it. Potentially starting to circle a little bit around the hips, getting into your inner hips. Again, moving from that initial ground of being and feeling how nature itself is moving through you from the earth element into the water element. And this is the place to be a bit more creative with motion rather than alignment. Maybe even rising onto your knees and repositioning the knees and getting into some side bending or anything else that comes to you. body guides you into stillness eventually you'll know when it's time and a child pose might come naturally <clears throat> if movement is still more active within your being let it be And as you initially settle in a static, any static position or any stillness position, see if you can surrender your weight back to the ground and at the same time, though, be maintain that level of alertness. So I have been trained in a number of healing modalities and I provide some healing touch throughout class as well as some minor and gentle adjustments. But I'd like to give you the opportunity to opt out of that if you'd rather not be assisted. So if you'd rather not be assisted today, please raise your hand so that I know and I can honor your space. Thank you. Deep breath in. On the breath out, slowly rise into a table position. And 
Take your time to come into a downward facing dog and let the legs expand and elongate while at the same time kneading those heels down to the mat, stretching through the hamstrings, stretching through the upper back and the mid back. Shaking the head no and yes, and just rolling those shoulders down the back. Still involving the freshness of breath. Reach your right leg up towards the sky with the inhale. And on the exhale, move into a plank with the knee to the chest. Again, lengthen it back and Re-elongate, feeling the length and volume of the leg and back into a core focused plank. One more time, inhale and exhale, stepping forward in a warrior one. As you set up your feet hip distance apart and rise up to stand, actively press into the ground with those feet and rise tall. Some circular motions around the shoulders, around the arms. Taking your hands behind your sacrum at one point and just kind of drawing your chest forward as you hinge and open your chest. Tuck and curl. And as you rise, extend the front leg and turn towards the left slightly to get into your hip. Come back to that warrior one, sink down into your knee joint without collapsing and do the other rolling forward and up, extending the leg and reopening to the side. Do that two more times. Inhale. Exhale, rise. Inhale, turn. And again, hinge. Nice. When you open up to the side next time, just come into that warrior two. Rebending the knee, circling the wrists, expanding the arms. And activate the front leg into the ground firmly before reversing your warrior. Finding that side bend with a relaxed effort in your left shoulder. Come into a side angle and elongate the other side of the body. We'll do this one more time, alternating between the two. Feel that ground of being out of which this sprouting of movement comes and feel as the water element continues to move through the body with this fluid motion back and forth. One last time, inhaling and exhaling. And now come back into a runner lunge. Frame your front foot with your hands and curl the back toes under, lifting the heel. Feel into the runner lunge and take it into a twist to your right. Just setting up your hand under your shoulder and feeling into that twist. Breath in. And on the breath out, releasing, stepping back to that downward facing dog, maybe a three-legged dog again, just to re-extend that leg long. Set your feet back down in a downward dog and shift forward for a plank pose. Feel into that pressing away from the earth and the strength of your glutes and quads. And lower the knees down as you hug your elbows in the first time around. And take it really, really slowly down to the ground. 
Elongate the legs back, activate the shoelace sides of the feet, and lift your chest so that your lowermost ribs are still on the ground, and you're rolling the shoulders down the back, and eventually lifting those hands off the ground. Breath in, breath out. One more in breath. On the out breath, press yourself up to a plank again, and back to your downward dog. Deep in breath, and out breath. And the left leg slowly rises up with the inhale. The knee comes back to the chest for a plank. Again. One last time. Stepping forward, rising up for warrior one. Fluid arms before setting them up. And then an openness in the heart as you hinge forward with the in-breath and a curling and uncurling as you rise back up. Leg elongates and return towards the mirrors. Back to the center, facing the front, bending the knee, then hinging with the in-breath. And the out breath, curling upwards, extend the front leg and turn. Two more times. The next time that you do this motion, Open it up to your warrior too. Adjust the placement of the feet a little differently. Expand the arms apart. Feel into the strength of this warrior while at the same time the gentleness in your gaze. Inhale and reverse it. <coughs> and exhale and expand to the other side. Let's do that again a couple more times. In and out. Wonderful. Come on down into a runner lunge. So heel that left foot towards the left some more to maintain the hip distance apart as you twist to your left. Deep in breath. With the out breath, plant palms down, step back either to downward dog or a three-legged dog again. <coughs> Release the feet down and shift forward to take your next Shataranga Dandasana. You might release the knees and come down like we did before. Or you might just lower down halfway through without releasing the knees in a low push-up to an upward facing dog instead of a cobra. You decide. Back into your downward facing dog. Breathing it in, letting it go. Deep in breath, and an out breath. Bend your knees, press your hips back, and look forward with the inhale. 
For the exhale, walk or float into a forward fold. And bend your knees plenty in this first forward fold to let the belly rest on the thighs and really kind of hinging from those hips to allow for a experience of release in your torso, in your neck, in your shoulders. And then rising up one vertebra at a time, you might press your hands into your thighs as you activate those legs into the earth and rise. Recollect yourself here energetically by bringing the palms back to heart space. Notice where your feet are at. Notice their full contact with the earth. Notice that coherent line of energy in the midline. And we'll flow again. Inhale, arms reach overhead. Exhale, bow, hinge from the hips in a forward fold. <coughs> in for a halfway lift. Out as you plant your palms down, stepping back to a plank pose. Either holding plank, or doing your Shataranga Vinyasa back to your Downward Dog. All of us will eventually meet in Downward Dog. Deep breath in. And a long breath out. Right leg slowly rises up to the sky. This time the knee might dial open as you draw an openness through your right hip, pressing the right foot up and back a little. Notice here if you just collapsed into your left shoulder and see if you can equalize the weight in both arms so that you're not collapsing into the pose. Yeah. Resquare the hips with the in breath. On the out breath, bring your knee towards your chest and step forward again, this time in a crescent lunge. <coughs> Rise up, tuck the pelvis under, feel into this kind of action of neutral pelvis, this alignment of the spine. So you're not overarching your tailbone back. Bringing the palms to heart space, feel into the entire weight in that front leg, and then shift your weight into it, slowly dragging the back foot through. Maybe the toes remain on the ground. Maybe the leg lifts and presses forward. We're going to re-bend the knee and lightly land in a crescent lunge, nice and slow, expanding through a airplane and then bending the front knee on purpose before landing, drawing your hips back. Bend the back knee, tuck pelvis under and dip down. Rise back up. Let's do it again. We're going to hinge, shift into the front leg, drag the back foot, either keep it on the ground or lift the knee, and keep that energy, that strength in that right leg, right glutes, before drawing the hips back and landing with a yield to the ground. Tuck the pelvis under again, and dip. We're going to do this two more times. Stay focused. Hinge, keep your gaze at something stable on the ground. Feel how your glutes are getting really strong in your quads. Keep your breath flowing. And have faith in yourself that you can do it. And dip. 
One last one. Make it count. Hinge, drag, and land. Tuck, then dip. Good job. Now, dial the back heel down, re-elongate that front leg to give it a little bit of a break. And then switch legs so that you're coming into your warrior two on the left leg. You're going to face the toes to the back of the room and re-sink into that warrior two. Feel the expansiveness of the arms. Notice if your tailbone is tilting back. Take a deep breath in. And on the breath out, come into a triangle pose on this side. Eventually elongating that left leg long, yeah. See if you can slightly tuck that left hip under. Yes, did you feel that? And keep that nice long line of energy in the pose, pulling the navel in and out. Deepest in breath. Activate the upper back muscles, yes. And Really knit your ribcage. Beautiful adjustment. Two more breaths. See if you can kind of, if you're collapsed down, you can kind of elongate the side body as if you are in one pane of, two panes of glass. Stacking the ribs too. Good job. Come back up and come into a goddess pose. The heels will come in, the toes will come out, and you kind of sink into this horse stand, but without overly collapsing into your hips. So you want to find that place in the middle where there is tension, but not a collapse into your hip joints. Nice. Take the arms into goal post. Squeeze your upper back muscles with the in-breath and the out-breath. We're going to rise up, taking the arms overhead with the inhale. With the exhale, pull down like you're pulling something really heavy from above and sinking back down. Now the tendency here is potentially Stick your butt back like that and bulge out your rib cage. See if you can maintain that nice long line of the tailbone going down. And each time that you come on down, activate the feet into the earth and the heels towards one another, which activates your glutes. And enjoy it. See if you can find an actual enjoyment and a delight in movement and in strengthening your body so that you're not kind of trying to get through it, but you're actually in it fully. It's such a great perspective once that shifted here. In and out. Last time, then lower, activate those feet into the earth, and hold as you slowly dip up and down halfway through for 10, 9, 8, 7. Six, five, four, 
three, two, one, and hold just for five, four, three, keep the long breath, two, and one. As you rise, adjust the placement of your feet so that they face the wide edge of the mat. Take some rocking of the hips side to side. And then press your hips forward to open up through the chest. Imagine there is a horizontal bar underneath your lowermost ribs. And you're going to try to kind of surpass it up and over without collapsing in your lower back. So press your hips a bit more forward and ground your feet. Good job. Deep breath in. Yes. Yeah. And a breath out. Beautiful. One more breath in. On the breath out, come back to neutral. Re-solidify that spine in a neutral place. Then activate the feet firm into the earth and hinge forward from the hips into a forward fold. Relax the neck and the shoulders and stay active in your feet. Deep in breath. Long out breath. Good. Slowly come on out of the pose and turn yourself back towards your right foot into a runner lunge. Once you get there, lower the back knee to the ground and actively press into the front foot as you rise up. If your knees are tender, you can roll your mat under like this. Now, See if you can kind of sink forward just slightly to get into that lift, left hip flexor. Then take your hands behind your head and do that same opening of the heart that we did before. So your hips are pressed and you're going to press your head into your hands and hands into your head. For three, two, and one. Slowly come out of the pose and Walk that right foot a bit more forward to find a little bit of a hamstring stretch. Maybe rocking the hips side to side for a bit. And then eventually planting your left hand on the ground and twisting with an elongated leg towards the mirror. See if you can twist from that mid-back area. Beautiful, Eric. Deep breath in. Keep active in that right heel a little bit more without locking your knee. Then come back to the center. Come into a runner lunge. Curl the back, toes under. And as you find your either downward dog or three-legged dog, you can flip your dog if you're in a three-legged dog and it feels good on your body and you feel that your back is open enough for this. You can just hold downward facing dog for another couple of breaths. All of us will meet back in a downward facing dog. Deep breath in, long breath out. And the left leg will rise up towards the sky. We'll do the same sequence on the other side. Inhale, the knee can bend to dial the hip open to start with like we did. Again, try not to collapse into your right armpit, into your right shoulder. And then re-square the hips and bring the knee to the chest. 
stepping forward in a crescent lunge. I love slow movement because it's very, very strengthening to the body to hold these posture and move slowly through them. It also helps us remain mindful to the actual journey of the practice and the process. So find that tucking under of the hips, find the engagement in your glutes. And then let's take the motion that we did before. First hinging into that front leg, feel the solidity of the foot before going anywhere. Either keeping the toe on the ground or lifting the leg. And landing back. Feeling the journey. And developing that beautiful confidence as you tuck the tailbone under again, dip down. What helps me is to keep my gaze at something solid on the ground that's more stable than my body. And to keep my breath, really, really keep a strong awareness of the breath, conscious breathing. And taking care not to dip before tucking under again. We're going to do two more times. Hinge. Notice your tendency to want to move faster. And kind of work with yourself to develop patience. All those skills are actually Really what I care most about is to develop skills we can use in our lives, functional skills for body and mind. And dipping. Good. Now let's dial the back heel down, elongate the front leg to give it a break. And then slowly switch to find warrior two on the other leg. So coming into warrior two on the right leg, having the right toes face the back of the room. Then bending and starting to feel into the experience of the stacking of the joints, the solidity in the feet, the expansion, step by step. It's so refreshing to just kind of be present for each step. And from here to come into your triangle pose. without locking your knee and remaining aware. So what's beautiful about these very minor adjustments that I give you through touch is that every time when you come to the other side, the adjustment is learned. And it's so beautiful to see how the body has its own body memory. And all it is is just subtle little cues through touch. And we all have different learning capacities. Some of us are more verbal and some of us are more kinesthetic. Let's take two more breaths here. And I encourage you here to find that middle again, that middle where you're not overly efforting, but you're not collapsing either. Where is your middle? Good. Rise back up and set up for your goddess pose.
<clears throat> so here I want you to learn a certain movement pattern first before we progress a little deeper into the pose. So find the dip down, up, then notice my right foot. It's gonna come to the ball of the foot and the heel is gonna go all the way back, turning me, and my left foot is actually facing the left corner, right corner of the mat, a little bit more, Eric. Yes. Now, dip down and up. Heels in, and dip again. And really exaggerate that turn. That right hip should come through and dip down slightly. Good. Good. Yeah, readjust the placement of that front knee so that it's still stacked on top of the ankle. Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, think of it as you're turning all the way through to the side, readjusting that front foot too. And dip. Don't forget the back heel. Good. Yeah. Back, down, heels in. Turning. And dipping. Nice. Now the next time that you turn, hinge into that left leg. And the same motion that we did with dragging the back foot through, we're going to do that. We're going to come into balance and just bring it back into the experience here. Maybe kicking. And then hinging back. And landing in goddess mindfully and dipping down. Good. So your body is slowly learning how to adjust for safety, keeping the stacking of the joints. First turning, right knee over the ankle, hinging, kicking, and mindfully landing. I can barely hear anybody's feet landing. This is amazing. Again, one last time. Hinge, turn, stay focused. Drag and balance. If you put your hands together at the heart, it makes it a little easier. That way you don't have to, you can still feel into that mid, that coherence in the midline. And don't forget to turn first, then hinge, then kick, and finally land. Landing in goddess and dipping up and down. Good, now stop and lift your right heel off the ground. Lower it down and then lift your left heel off the ground. Lower it down. Either do right, bend left or lift both. Engage your pelvic floor, pull the navel in and up and grow tall through the crown of the head for five, four, Three, two, and one. Release, expand, situate the feet, hip distance, long, not hip distance, but a little bit less wide, and then bow forward. Letting the experience of this specific forward fold be authentic to your body with any modifications that you wish to make.
Deep breath in. With the breath out, slowly walk your hands towards your left leg into a runner lunge. And step it back in a three-legged dog or a downward dog, maybe a flip dog. Oh, I forgot something. Step it forward again and lower the back knee. Then hinge into the pose, like into the front foot. And now the key here, so look how easy it is to just collapse, okay? Like, look at this motion. It's like clothes on a hanger, right? So we don't want that. We want to keep the integrity of the structure and squeezing the muscles into the bones and pressing the front foot into the ground and back and the back knee into the ground and forward. Then, just taking it to a notch where you press your hips slightly forward and press your head into your hands, opening through your heart. This is not an easy pose, especially if you have any hunching down in the upper back. You really want to squeeze those upper back muscles to counteract that hunching. Breathe it in, on the breath out, coming through into an extended front leg. Feeling into the stretch, and then taking that into a twist to the other side. One more breath in, on the breath out, release, sink into that runner lunge again, curl the back toes under, then extend the front leg up and back in a three-legged dog or a downward dog. If you did the flip dog on the other side, this might be another place you could try. Or it might not suit your shoulders and your back. All of us meeting back in that downward facing dog with a breath in and a breath out. And coming slowly in a child pose. Deep in breath. And an out breath. Home sweet home, back to the earth. Forehead, completely released. Take your time to release out of your child pose to come into one more small sequence. We're going to come into table pose and take the left leg back with the in breath and with the out breath Dial that left hip kind of higher than the other hip. Circle your ankle through. And then let 
yourself slowly land that foot to the back of the mat and rise up into a balance this is not an easy balance activate the full left foot into the earth not just the side of the foot so plant your left foot on the ground fully nice feel that strong core connection and then into another side bend land the right foot back down plant the left hand on the ground and take the left leg to the side here keeping your left hand I'm sorry your right hand on the ground twist towards the side of the extended leg put your whole left foot on the ground not just the edge of it good job now see if you can thread that arm through and if it feels good to do that if it doesn't then replace that left knee on the ground into a thread the needle regular thread the needle for some of us it might feel great for some of us it might be really intense so you watch out for what works for you it's a very deep inner hip stretch come back through with the in breath and with the out breath see if you can kind of just shake up that left leg before setting it forward into a pigeon pose that back leg will extend the right leg will extend and the left leg is forward in pigeon some of you will really enjoy doing this on your back instead take your time to set it up just like everything else that I've been talking about today set up your placement of the right or I mean left thigh aligned with the edge of the mat square the hips maybe you decide there is a block that needs to be put under your left sits bone maybe not just feel into it as you breathe in and breathe out deep in breath and a long out breath one more breath in together and a breath out together and slowly start to move out of the stretch to come into pigeon I'm sorry not yet to come into table pose And then elongating the right leg back. Stacking the hips. Feeling into the stacking as you circle your ankle through. And then with control, landing that foot back. 
planting it fully on the ground, all three corners of the foot. Engage your left glute and use your core to lift you up into this pretty unstable balance. You have to really engage your core and your glutes here to stay in it and your legs, your foot in the ground. Deep breath in. On the breath out, slowly release it back down. Lift and extend the right leg to the side. Keeping your left hand on the ground, come into a deep twist. Opening up from the mid-back. Breath in. And on the breath out, threading through. If that felt appropriate, stay. Otherwise, replace your right knee on the ground. Deep in breath together. With the out breath, come back through. And bring your right knee towards your chest and set up for pigeon on this side. All those hips movements we just did should help you in setting up this pigeon. Might be feeling a little bit more open in the inner hips at least. And again, taking your time to release your weight back to the ground. Breath by breath. Taking your time to slowly rise out of the pose. As you slowly make your way into a seated position. However you get there is great. I'm just gonna take a moment 
to stretch the legs and go into the, my favorite kind of twisting motions, taking your feet to the outside edges of the mat and seeing if you can kind of turn towards the back of the room. But notice how I'm turning my entire torso and legs to the side to find that deep twist, but that's also taking into account the lower back. Yeah, so lift, rotate that left hip all the way through, Eric. Yes. Come back down and to the front. And do that same thing with the other leg. So that entire hip rotates through, both hips rotate through. That hand can be further back to kind of twist it through to the side. Back to the center. One more time on each side. Back to the center and to the other side. Come on back through to the middle and onto your backs. See if you can turn your heads so that your heads are on this side of the mat and your legs are at the back of the mat, back of the room. And as you lower down onto the ground, plant your feet under your knees firmly and activate your arms into the earth firmly. Lift up into a bridge pose. Slowly lowering back down to the earth to get into any posture that feels good to come into after bridge. Maybe it's a reclining twist where you let your knees drop to one side. For a while, maybe it's a happy baby pose. Or balancing yourself on your sacrum. Finally, coming into your Shavasana. Letting the entire body reestablish contact with the earth. And see if you can find the deepest silence. Where is the deepest silence, the deepest stillness? Mm. 
It might be felt as a field that is wrapped around you. Or it might be felt as a deep blackness that is washing down over you, within that yin, that blackness of the womb, womb space, the ground of being. all pervasive deep deep calm and as your body learns how to usher in the deepest calm. Mm. It starts to learn how to do that in all life situations. Even in the midst of activation. And sometimes we don't have access to that, and it's okay. Yesterday I didn't have access to that deepest calm when I was activated, but over time we start to just get access to it. More and more it becomes our default. We start to kind of learn to fall back into that deepest calm, the ever-present, the living present, that originary ground of being. Fall back into it. Soften into it. Melt into it. Chidananda Para Brahma Para Shotam Para Matma Shri Bhagavati Sametha Shri Bhagavati Namaha Shanti, Shanti.
calling upon the highest power, ultimate consciousness of the universe who enters my heart and becomes my inner voice, ultimate divine feminine, ultimate divine masculine. I honor you. I trust in your guidance and recognize your presence. Mula Mantra. Take your time to slowly start to find some movements around the hands and the feet. Waking up the senses. At some point, uh, rolling over onto your side. If you prefer to remain reclined for the close of our class, that's okay with me. Otherwise, if you rolled over, slowly make your way up into a seated position. And resetting ourselves up in that coherent belly, heart, mind, long line of energy within our core center, finding the alignment in that coherence and the balance, and wishing that for all human beings and dedicating the benefits of our practice to all beings, all beings, including all the animals in our planet. We close together with one sound of Om. First, take a cleansing breath. Inhale. Thank you so much for allowing me to teach you today. The Great Spirit in me honors the Great Spirit in you. Namaste. Namaste. I wanted to announce our 200-hour teacher training, uh, One Voice, that's starting in October. So I'm really, really excited to invite you to join it if you want to deepen your practice and become a bit more aware of all of the stuff I was talking about today. You don't have to want to teach, but if you want to teach, that's a plus as well. So if you know of anyone or you're interested yourself, please check out our website at onevoiceyoga.com. Thank you. <laughs> Corina took it. All right, you guys.